Hey guys, welcome to episode 16 of the Fire Fun Friday series. In this weekly series, I show you guys all the stocks that I bought, all the stocks that I sold, and any big changes that I have made to my passive income portfolio that I've called the Fire Fund. Today is also our end of month recap for October 2021, so we get to see how much progress we've made this month towards our goal. So if you're ready, let's get into it. On this channel, I talk about all things finance, wealth building, and how you can achieve the life of your dreams through financial independence. If you want to join me on this journey to financial independence, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let me start off the week with some not so great news. There are inherent risks with any form of trading, and my options trading strategy is no exception. I started trading a few months ago with very little capital, so I chose a relatively cheap stock to start with. But the stock had relatively high volatility. More risk for more reward. Things were going well for the first month and I was making consistent profit every single week. But the beginning of any journey will always have the most mistakes and most learnings. After trying to avoid it for almost two months, last Friday my options contracts expired and I was assigned 200 shares of AMC at $42 per share. This means I had to buy 200 shares of AMC for $42 per share while it was trading at $38 per share and has only fallen since then. So I had to buy the shares at an immediate loss and I've been bleeding out ever since. I did sell two options contracts against the shares this week to mitigate some loss, but it's bleeding faster than the options can cover. AMC is having its quarterly earnings call either on November 1st or November 8th, so I will be holding the stock and not selling any more contracts against it until the earnings has passed, or the stock somehow skyrockets above $38 a share. I do believe AMC had a really good quarter with the Shang-Chi movie, and it was reported movie attendance skyrocketed and surpassed the February 2020 numbers. But I'm still pretty sure that AMC will report a loss but if those losses are less than what Wall Street estimates, like they were last quarter, it will be a really good indication of a recovery for the company. So my plan for now, hold until after earnings or sell if it passes 38 or drops below 30. Speaking of selling, let's move on to the stock sales I made this week. In terms of sales, I exited my position from Algonquin Power and Utilities. I held this for a few months to see how I liked the company. Its price fluctuated but appears to have downward trajectory. I got one dividend payment but the payout was not high enough for me so I felt the money was better used in other stocks. I only have 5 shares which I sold for $15.10 per share which is a whole 5 cents of profit. Honestly, I'm just happy I didn't lose money. When we try to pick stocks, not every one will be a winner. Profit is the best case and break evens are the next best thing. Warren Buffett's number one rule is to never lose money. All right, let me show you guys my purchases for the week. As stated earlier, I was assigned 200 shares of AMC at $42 per share for a total cost of $8,400. I am down over 12% at the moment and the stock does not pay a dividend. I don't consider this as part of my Fire Fund dividend portfolio. It's part of my options trading side of things. The money used to purchase the shares was held by the broker as collateral, so it's cash that's been sitting there for the last two months. So it's cash that is separate from my dividend stock purchasing budget. For my actual dividend portfolio purchases, I picked up 20 shares of Chimera Investment Corporation for about $300 this week because its price dropped below my original cost basis, so it was a great opportunity to dollar cost average downward. The 20 shares brings the total in the portfolio up to 40 and increases our annual dividend income by $26.31. After that, I picked up the usual 4 shares of SPYG. This stock is about to break the $70 price point already. Tech stocks like Microsoft and Tesla have been skyrocketing this week, so it's driving up growth ETFs like this. If you want to invest in growth stocks, but don't want to spend $1,000 on one share of Tesla, then growth ETFs can give you exposure to those stocks at a fraction of the price. The four shares I picked up brings the total in the portfolio up to 51 and increases our annual dividend income by $1.91. Next up, I brought four shares of NUSI. 
I have not bought much of this stock in the last two weeks because my focus was shifted towards RYLD this week. The four shares of NUSI I did buy brings the total number of shares in the portfolio up to 64. And it brings in $8.27 of annual dividend income. And here we have RYLD. This week I went all in on RYLD using the bulk of my budget to pick up 19 shares for $473 bringing the total shares up to 105 in the portfolio and providing $55.16 of annual dividend income. This position should have just enough money to start picking up one share per month on its own. And lastly, I wanted to show that I did not buy any QYLD this week. It actually completely slipped my mind that I did not buy any because I was so focused on RYLD. I will be shifting my focus to NUSI and QYLD for the next few weeks to get those positions up to 100 shares each so they can start snowballing on their own as well. So this week I spent a total of $9,565.90, $8,400 of which was collateral so it does not count towards my weekly dividend stock purchases. So without that, I still went a little over budget and spent a total of $1,165.90 on dividend stock. The purchases increased our annual dividend income by $91.65, bringing our annual dividend income up to $2,378.42, a 4.05% growth. We are very close to the 20% mark towards our goal of $12,000 per year of dividend income. We should be able to hit that goal by next week. I am about to max out my 401k contributions for the year, so my next few paychecks should have some extra cash in it. I'm hoping I can throw all that extra money into this portfolio. All right, now let's take a look at our end of month recap. So this month we spent a total of $4,636.37 and increased our annual dividend income by $346.58. This increase brought us 2.89% closer to our goal of $12,000 a year in dividend income. The reason I track all of this and make these videos is to show that the journey does take a long time. All we can do is take it one step at a time. We will get there eventually. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for joining me here on another Fire Fun Friday. Let me know in the comments below where you're at on your path to financial independence. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps get the message out there to more people who might need help getting started on their financial independence journeys. Thanks again, I'll see you on the next one.